Input devices and software used to teach students with severe developmental delays to use the computer by Jean E. Stork, Doctor of Science in Instructional Design and Technology. Hi, I'm Jean Stork. This video accompanies my dissertation. I study students with developmental delays in elementary school who were learning either the mouse or the trackpad to see which device, if either, could be learned more quickly. There'll be more on my dissertation later. I will actually have a PowerPoint with some highlights from the dissertation in part two of the video. This is part one. Part one, I will be showing you some of the software and some of the hardware that I used. Let's start with the hardware. The mice in my lab are adapted mice. There's actually paper stuck here with tape around it to prevent kids from right clicking. My students, even some of my academic students, don't understand about right click versus left click. They end up right clicking on everything. So, physically impossible to right click and if the kids peel up off the tape because it's sensory and fun to play with, no big deal, I just tape it back again. And that's just ordinary paper that's been rolled up and jammed in the mouse. The left click works just fine. Unfortunately, so does this little scrolly bar. I tried a couple of different things to keep that from moving or clicking, but everything I try the kids seem to be a little bit too good at undoing. So I have yet to come up with a good solution for that. If I ever do come up with a good solution, I will post it on my website because there might be other special education computer teachers who could use the advice. Or maybe one of you has some advice and you can post your comments. But left click, simple activation for, for these students. Click something happens. Click and drag, click and hold, click and drag to specific locations, click on specific locations. I haven't listed everything in order, but those are some of the basic skills. This is the trackpad that I used. I chose gray because I've got light colored tables and I wanted the visual contrast. This whole surface is smooth and the table is smooth, so for some students having these little edges might not be enough. The visual adds another degree of contrast. Tap. Tap on any location and it works. I've turned off all of the multi-touch, so if students use their whole hand, I want them to learn one finger, but if in the beginning they use their whole hand, they're not going to accidentally do something. Eventually move the mouse to where you want it and tap. Drag, tap, drag, release. Just about anything that can be done on the mouse can be done with the trackpad. Now, let me turn on one of these computers and I'll show you some of the software that I use. The first piece of software that I'm going to show you is a website called Help Kids Learn. H-E-L-P-K-I- D Z L E A R N dot com. We're going to go through Big Bang Pictures because it's good for just showing basic cause and effect. You press the mouse button, something happens. Click. Another thing that the students really like here are some of the stories. If it's the same story 30 times and by the end of the period he is independently pressing the button, I'm happy. And here again, simple click. This doesn't really have music, it's more visual. But some of my students are more visual learners and maybe the music is distracting. Maybe they can focus better on the computer without the music. Sometimes it's hard to figure out what's going to get a kid excited, but if this is what does it, fine. I'm not 
not going to go through the whole story, but you get the general idea. Active, active song. Oh, where's the music? Got to press again to hear it. So with the same idea, only with the mouse. And as students improve with the mouse, there's even more they can do. One of the skills that I trained and tested my students on was clicking on a specific target. This is peeping musicians. So find the musicians, click. Now the reason why I hide the dock for the students, it's very easy to bring the mouse down to the bottom and next thing you know, you're opening a PowerPoint or something instead of staying in your program. Bring the cursor over. Once it's, the cursor is on the musician, I can tap anywhere on the trackpad. I don't need to tap a certain space. They also need to learn not to go tappity, tappity, tappity. I went to a series of workshops where they called this happy clicking. You can also happy click here. The same idea of this being a toy in and of itself and not really understanding yet that the device runs the computer. Unfortunately, happy clicking continues. I have seen kids read and write on the third grade level and they've developed that happy clicking and it can be very difficult to get rid of. It was a side issue that was kind of mentioned treating the device appropriately, but it really wasn't the focus of my dissertation. So under creative, we can work on holding the button down while you move the mouse or trackpad arrow. One of the fine motor skills that I instructed and tested was the ability to hold the mouse button down or hold down on the trackpad while you're moving the cursor. This is a fun activity to practice with. Now, I'm not yet worried about staying in the lines. That's too precise. Right now, just the basic fine motor, press, move, and release. Press, move, release. This is that movement that we learned with the previous musicians one where you move the arrow to where you want before clicking so you choose your color and now here's the press move so you can color it in and release and as i said i'm not so worried about staying in the lines the kids go way off the page what i'm evaluating right now is can they move with their finger down or does the finger keep popping up and so they don't get a good movement. Splat the plans is good for learning to wait, press when you need to, but not before. I need to wait for the clown to be in the center and then I press. And this can be adjusted fast or slow. The clown can actually dwell to give people more time to get there if they have trouble physically getting to their device. This game is very forgiving if you don't get to your device in time. There's no penalty. And once you get five splats, you get a little reward. So there's a whole bunch of different things here for very basic learners and the next step. This is Classroom Suite. It's not produced anymore, but it still works on these old computers and the kids love it. 
So I continue to use it. I created these folders. Most of them I created myself. The folders that I use the most with my students who are just learning the mouse or the trackpad are cause and effect and mouse. Cause and effect is generally easier than mouse, but there's a couple of kids on the cause and effect level who absolutely love some of the mouse activities. Whatever motivates the child, each child is different. I've got one class that is fixated on Chicka Boom Boom. Just a very simple press. And it works on the mouse as well. A told B and B told C. I'll meet you at the top of the coconut tree. Music stops, you press again. You know you can press when you see the hand. The picture stop, the music stops. You've got a variety of cues when it's proper to press. Some of my kids love trucks. All of the activities that I'm showing you in Classroom Suite are created by teachers, occupational therapists, parents, speech therapists, anybody who works with kids. The music, though, is copywritten by the artists, by the publishers that, that created the music. So we're only showing very quick snippets. And with this activity, you just get a couple seconds, press, and a couple seconds of another song. Most of the cause and effect work the same way. Here's an example of using the trackpad with a cause and effect activity. Back to Publish, moving on to my mouse folder. I don't know who created Education Wrap, but I have one class of nine and 10 year olds that love it. In fact, after two years of working with it, I now have two kids in that class of six students who can do it independently. These are considered mouse training because you have to move the mouse to the picture you want. We start out by having the kids touch the picture and then helping them hand over hand to move the mouse. And now I've got two kids who can move the mouse independently. Now remember, these, that particular class is kids with very severe autism and with it very severe developmental delay. So for them to even learn how to do this simple thing in two years is a lot. Who knows what they'll learn in the next two years. One kid in that class likes Elmo, Elmo. And if he's tired of Elmo, no Elmo, no Elmo. I never heard him talk before using this. So I, that was a real bonus. Now he is using one word and two word phrases. All of the activities that I put in the mouse learning folder can also be used with the trackpad. I'll show you wheels on the bus. And I tend to move with my middle finger and tap with my thumb, but whatever works best for the students. And you can tap anywhere. Everything in the mouse folder works pretty much the same way. Some of them are more visual, some of them are just music, but they're just simple. Move the mouse and click is what I'm working on at this level. There's also creative tools. The paint tools here, the kids like. It's a painting program. Pretty much like the way you would paint in any painting program, but it's very simple. But again, it's good for learning to hold the mouse button down while you're doing something. Here is an example of painting, which uses the press, move, release technique. Only I'm using the trackpad this time. One of the activities might be to 
put another tree next to or on top of this tree. So, pick another tree. Click. They've got them next to each other. Put a sun over here. Or I might tell a student, where do you want to put a sun? The student points to the spot and then they need to put the sun where they pointed. Now I want them to drag a bunch of clouds from the sun to the trees. This is a more advanced skill. You, kids can use two hands if they want, one to press and one to move, or they can do it all with one hand. You can even press, move, release with one finger. There are many different pieces of software and websites that can be used to teach basic mouse skills, but these are the two that I used in my dissertation. Classroom Suite, which was by IntelliKeys, later by AbleNet, and now has been retired, and Help Kids Learn, which I use Safari to access, but you can use any web browser. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Thank you for viewing. Leave a comment if you have a question.